The whole concept of AI assistance has been around for a long time. It was very difficult to either set those systems up or costly to access the resources to go do crazy things. Yep. What ChatGPT, the whole Dolly, OpenAI stuff did was they made it accessible and available to everyone. And the people are using it to create, you know, the world's hardest working cat. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it starts to get people thinking about what this technology is actually capable of and how they would use it. How are developers' needs evolving um, as we move to more cloud-native apps, more yeah. generative AI, augmented apps? Over the past sort of three, four, five years, how have you seen that kind of developer world change? I mean, it's, it's the eternal problem everybody has, do more with less, right? Innovate faster, how do I stay ahead of my competition? That pressure has only intensified. And I think this is what gave rise to cloud. This is what will give rise to the next generation of AI. The core need that you got to solve for is how do I remove friction from the developer workflow to enable them to focus on the things that are important, the innovative things versus the operational things, and help them get to market quickly? That's a constant conversation that, that um, you know, is happening in any engineering group or even, even all the way up at any uh, executive team level. And I think that's one of the kind of cornerstones of who we are, where we built, why we built what we did. It was built by developers, for developers, with the fundamental principle of making stuff frictionless, making it easy for them to go create and innovate. Can I be a cynical bastard and say every, everybody says they want to remove friction for developers? How much of that is really a technical problem? I mean, often if you're a developer, you're in a big financial services organization, your friction is compliance, right? And it's like 101 different security requirements yep. and it's all this stuff. Is it really a technical problem that, you know, MongoDB can, can do better than uh, whoever else? I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Here's why. We live now in a world in which I can, I can get a service for anything. There's a million services that I can compose yeah. with. And that sounds really amazing. It's certainly better than a million pieces of software to manage. But... Million services. Integrations. If I, if I have to go learn how to yeah, operate, stitching move together. data between, explain to the regulator how all these hundreds of services are all coming together, how can I as this artisan of our time, this builder, this developer, go build with those things in a way that's easy to understand? And I think like Peter was saying, you know, our vision is to be a build anything platform for operational data. You should be able to build the vast majority of your software, the vast majority of the features in your software, the vast majority of your microservices on an operational data foundation that's consistent, that has all the crucial building blocks from a security and compliance perspective built in, so that you don't have to say, hey, you know, I, I have some bespoke needs, so I need to introduce some new thing that's never been used before in my organization. It's the exact opposite here. It's that ultimate 80-20 rule in one platform, anchored on an ease of use, which is the document model. Yep. I'll give you a different viewpoint on that 80-20 model that I think is really important for the C-suite. So Gartner's come out and literally said that in any business, 20% of your dollars is focused on innovation and growth. 80% of your dollars is focused on keeping lights on and all the operational stuff. Now you get into this world of cloud and the managed Atlas service, the fact that we're basically removing the need to stitch all this stuff together. Well, that starts to grow that 20% into 30% to 50%. And when we flip that triangle and you're spending the most of your dollars on innovating versus operating, yep. that's what customers are looking for, right? That's why you want to go down this path that you're seeing both with generative AI, just the general cloud motion. And I think that's what we've been able to tap into as one of the first movers, especially in the database space, to really go after the managed option that removes that operational burden. One of the things we've done, and you'll see us continue to double down on, is there's a horizontal platform that we have with Atlas and everything we do uh, in, in the product itself. Yeah. Then there is the vertical solutions that we go after. And even in those slow-moving institutions that you talk about, as we go in, and whether it's financial services, automotive, insurance, classic business that don't necessarily move super fast. Yeah. The way we're able to go in with these reference architectures and solutions to help them define the outcome has actually generated kind of a groundswell of customer bases. Like we could sit and say nine out of the top 10 banks, five out of the top auto manufacturers, et cetera, et cetera. They're all using MongoDB Atlas because it enables them to basically get over that hump and they don't have that shock and awe of how do I do this? They're just jumping in and doing it. And you'd be surprised a day in your life, how much of the things that you do are touching the platform that we built. The thing that in a way we're jumping past in this conversation is at its core, what is it about? about MongoDB that makes us so compelling for all of those different kinds of industries, all of those different kinds of builders. And it is fundamentally a question of, can I, as someone who's writing software, think about the fidelity of the real world in a way that I can capture and encapsulate in a way the software will understand easily? And that's where this richly structured document model, which has 
flexibility, shape to it, heterogeneity, polymorphism, all these terms you don't need to become an expert in, but the ability to organically express the real world in your software is the crucial differentiator. It has always been the crucial differentiator for MongoDB. I bring all that up because right now, people are realizing the importance of what was always relevant for, for a developer's mind. What made MongoDB so organic for developers increasingly is just kind of obviously also relevant interestingly, to the machine's mind, in the sense that if you want to be able to capture the flexibility and dynamism of the real world, as you have more and more interfaces that go deeper into making software ubiquitous, it's just absurd at a point to try and cram that into tables. And so that core flexibility of the, the rich structured document model, it's always been our super differentiator. It's, it's our secret sauce. It's a superpower. And it is the thing that we build around. And sometimes we struggle with how to even explain it. Ha, ha, ha.